childhood love is a romance trope with lots of potential, and readers seem to love it. The idea of seeing someone and instantly falling for them is appealing because it is so complete and also so unlikely. But unpopular opinion? Sometimes childhood love can seem creepy. Is it weird to have a crush on someone as a child, not see them for years but still pine for them? Let's dig into this romantic trope in Under the Oak Tree. Riften first sees Maxie when he's working as a stable hand for Croiso Castle. His heart twinged as he realized that she longed to be held. He felt her loneliness so acutely that he almost mistook it for his own. Even though he knows they are from totally different social classes, he tries to get a glimpse of her every day and leaves little tokens like pebbles for her to find. And because of his devotion, Riften is there to save Maxie from a lizard attack. This all seems like innocent puppy love. We have to emphasize that at no point ever in childhood did Riften think of Maxie sexually. But Riften is still an older boy spying on a much younger girl. And not only that, they've never even spoken. Riften doesn't know a single thing about Maxie. They are complete strangers. Is he just some kind of medieval romance creeper? The answer may be a little more complicated than that. Riften never tries to talk to Maxie, and his gifts aren't transactional. In fact, he's surprised and delighted when Maxie makes him a flower wreath as a gift, too. Admiring someone way out of his league? Wondering about their life? Making them gifts? That sounds a lot more like Riften is a fanboy with a celebrity crush. Maxie is his bias, the somewhat public figure he's fascinated with. He builds a parasocial relationship in his mind, while she barely knows he exists. Now, celebrity crushes can definitely get creepy, but it's not like Riften is waiting outside the castle to draw a sketch of Maxie sleeping. This isn't some sort of perverted medieval paparazzi thing. Instead, Riften realistically evaluates the chances for him to be with Maxie, less than zero. He leaves to become a mercenary instead of sticking around with his hopeless longing for something that will never happen. Of course, throughout Riften's mercenary work, he can't quite forget Maxie. She made such an impression on Riften that when Ruth asks him to think of a happy memory, he thinks of child Maxie peacefully making flower crowns. Again, lots of creeper potential here, but that's where the fantasy stops. Ruth offers a fantasy that doesn't impact the real individual at all, almost like cinematic fanfiction. And even with the opportunity to imagine anything at all, Riften still thinks of the sweet child he once knew, not a sexualized older version to fulfill his desires. Even in his most vulnerable moments, Riften's respect is unwavering. But why doesn't Riften tell Maxie about his childhood crush later on? We're going to give you the subversive and heartbreaking answer. Riften himself thinks he's being a creep in a way. That stops him from revealing everything to Maxie, even after they are married. Riften thinks he's unworthy of Maxie because he was born a commoner. Also, don't forget, Maxie doesn't remember him at all. When he realizes that, it reinforces his view of himself as a creepy fanboy to Maxie, the idol. To be fair, because she was treated so cruelly, Maxie may have suppressed childhood memories. And here's another theory. What if Maxie also had a childhood crush on Riften? After he saves her from the lizard, she sneaks to Riften's workplace to give him a gift. This is mind-blowing, because it shows that she cares about him enough to figure out where he worked. And when she is literally saved from Duke Croiso's abuse through marriage to Riften, she does come to trust that Riften isn't a bad guy pretty quickly. The problematic part is when Riften and Maxie try to push their expectations on one another. Their fantasy versions and assumptions prevent them from genuinely connecting with each other in real life. But throughout the course of the series, both learn how to listen and compromise. They find something even better than fan-like adoration. They find actual love with one another. What do you think? Is Riften's childhood crush creepy? Why did he never confess his memories to Maxie? Comment below. And don't forget to let us know if there are any more romance tropes you'd like us to cover. And remember to subscribe to the channel for more amazing UOT content.